The Netherlands, or the Low Countries, is known as the land of windmills, tulip fields, and the tallest people in the world. Yet behind this image lies a complex biological and genetic history stretching back thousands of years. The DNA of the Dutch tells a story of remarkable survival, mixing, and adaptation, the result of millennia of interactions between indigenous hunter-gatherers, waves of farmers from the Near East, steppe peoples from the East, and later historical upheavals. To fully understand that origin, we must go back hundreds of thousands of years to a time when this land belonged to an ancient human species, the Neanderthals. In 2001, in Zeeland near the coast of Scheveningen, a Dutch amateur diver accidentally discovered a strange bone fragment. Later analysis by archaeologists revealed it to be part of a Neanderthal individual, whom they named Crine. This finding proved that Neanderthals once lived and interacted in these muddy coastal plains and wetlands. When modern humans, Homo sapiens, arrived in Europe around 40,000 years ago, they coexisted and interbred with Neanderthals, leaving about 2% of Neanderthal DNA in the genomes of modern Dutch people, a unique genetic trace of contact between two human species. This mixture not only contributed to the genetic legacy, but also helped shape certain physiological adaptations that allowed humans to survive the harsh, cold climate of the Ice Age. After the Ice Age ended around 10,000 years ago, Groups of hunter-gatherers carrying Y-DNA haplogroup I2 and MT-DNA haplogroups U5 and U4 common across Western Europe inhabited the region that is now the Netherlands. They lived along rivers and lakes, hunting deer, fish, and birds while foraging for forest plants. During this period, humans were still nomadic, moving seasonally without permanent settlements. A turning point came when waves of early farmers from Anatolia migrated into Europe around 6,000-5,000 BCE, bringing with them wheat, livestock, pottery, and new haplogroups such as G2A, J2, N1A, T2, H, and K. These newcomers did not conquer the Netherlands through violence, but gradually integrated with the local hunter-gatherers, giving rise to the Swifterbint culture 5,300-3,400 BCE, a distinctive delta culture where hunters, foragers, and farmers met and merged. Ancient DNA studies reveal that the Swifterbint people had a mixed genetic composition combining Western hunter-gatherer WHG, and early European farmer, EEF, ancestry. This indicates that the blending between the two groups occurred gradually and selectively. The local hunter-gatherers adopted agricultural technologies, while the incoming farmers slowly adapted to the wetland environment and harsh northern climate. From this period onward, the Dutch genetic makeup began to develop a remarkable long-term stability, a trait that would endure for thousands of years to come. Around 2500 BCE, a major genetic transformation took place with the expansion of the Bell Beaker culture, which originated in the Iberian Peninsula and rapidly spread across Western and Central Europe. They brought with them the Y-DNA haplogroup, R1B, a paternal lineage that still counts for of Dutch men today. This period also marked the beginning of the spread of Indo-European languages across Europe, laying the foundation for the later emergence of the Germanic language family. The Bell Beaker people are considered the direct ancestors of the early Germanic tribes that inhabited this region, such as the Frisi, Batavi, and Canaan Ephates communities that lived along the Rhine River and the North Sea coast. During the Iron Age, these groups developed their own distinct cultural identities, and by the first century BCE, as the Roman Empire expanded, they became part of the ancient world. However, despite strong cultural and commercial influences from Rome, the genetic structure of the local population remained largely unchanged. Archaeological and DNA studies from sites such as Nijmegen and Vorburg indicate that Mediterranean genetic influence reached only about 4-6%, primarily among urban populations. The rural farmers and countryside inhabitants who made up the majority continued to preserve the indigenous Bell Beaker and corded ware genetic heritage. 
After the Roman withdrawal in the 5th century, the region entered the turbulent period of the Great Migrations. Yet rather than being completely replaced, the native population gradually integrated with incoming groups such as the Franks, Saxons, and Frisians, forming the ethnic foundation of the medieval Dutch people. The Frankish tribes carriers of the Y-DNA haplogroups R1BU106 and I1 were Germanic-speaking peoples who later became the ancestral core of the Dutch, the Flemish, and part of the German population. Thus, the Dutch can be regarded as the direct genetic descendants of the northern Bellbeaker peoples and the Franks, rather than the result of later large-scale migrations. The Viking Age 9th-11th centuries left a certain genetic imprint, particularly in the northern Netherlands and Frisian regions, where DNA evidence shows the presence of haplogroups I1 and R1, a lineages characteristic of Scandinavia. However, this influence remained relatively minor and quickly blended into the native genetic structure. Compared with the Danes or Norwegians, the Dutch population still exhibits a much higher frequency of R1BU106, demonstrating the strong preservation of their ancient genetic heritage. During the Middle Ages, Dutch city-states and merchant communities flourished, attracting settlers from Germany, Flanders, and occasionally from Southern Europe. Nevertheless, modern genetic research, including the Dutch Genome Project conducted by the University of Groningen, has shown that the Dutch possess one of the most stable genetic profiles in Europe, while overall genetic diversity within the country is relatively low, regional differences are quite distinct. Northern populations, such as those in Friesland and Groningen, show closer genetic affinities to Danes and Northern Germans, whereas Southern populations in Limburg and Brabant are more similar to Belgians and Rhineland Germans. This genetic differentiation does not reflect modern political borders, but rather the result of long-term historical and geographical processes spanning thousands of years. During the period of Spanish rule, 16th, 17th centuries, genetic influence was almost negligible. Although Spanish military and administrative presence lasted for centuries, the religious and social divide between Iberian Catholics and Dutch Protestants greatly limited intermarriage and biological integration. This contributed to the preservation of local genetic homogeneity, even as Dutch culture and language underwent a period of significant independent development. Today, modern genetic profiling shows that the Dutch possess a distinctive Y-DNA and MT-DNA structure. About 49% of Dutch men belong to haplogroup R1B, primarily R1BU106, 16.5% to haplogroup I1, along with smaller proportions of E1B1B, J2, and G2, reflecting ancient influences from the Mediterranean and the Middle East. In terms of maternal lineages, Dutch women carry MT-DNA haplogroups H, 40%, U, 16%, T, 14%, J, 11%, and K, 10%, a pattern similar to Western Europe. Autosomal DNA analyses place the Dutch at the center of the Northwestern European genetic spectrum, closely related to Germans, the English, and Danes, yet still retaining their own distinct features shaped by relative geographical and historical isolation. Recent research shows that although the Dutch today live in one of the most densely populated countries in the world, they still bear the marks of historical genetic stratification. Their modern genetic structure reveals three main temporal layers. The legacy of ancient European hunter, gatherers, Neolithic farmers from the Middle East, and Yemnaya pastoralists from the Eurasian steppe. This fusion forms the genetic foundation of most Western European peoples. But in the Netherlands, the process occurred more slowly and with less disruption. As a result, the country has become a natural laboratory for studying the evolutionary genetics of the European population. Beyond the biological aspect, geography has also played a crucial role. The Netherlands, a low-lying land constantly battling the sea, has long shaped the stability of its population. For centuries, the Dutch lived in tightly knit agricultural and water management communities, where marriages typically occurred within the same village or small region, creating a localized genetic island effect. 
This isolation helped preserve certain rare genetic variants, particularly those linked to height and lipid metabolism. It is no coincidence that the Netherlands today has the tallest average height in the world partly due to nutrition, but also reflecting natural selection for growth-related genes within a relatively homogeneous population. In summary, the genetic story of the Dutch is one of persistence and transformation in balance. They are not the result of invasions or population replacements, but rather the product of thousands of years of interaction and adaptation within a shared ecological and cultural landscape. From the Swifter Bant people who integrated with Anatolian farmers, to the Bell Beaker communities carrying steppe ancestry, from the early Germanic tribes to the urban dwellers of the Middle Ages, all have contributed to the remarkably stable genetic legacy that defines the Dutch people today. The modern Dutch are therefore the direct descendants of the people who have inhabited these lowlands for more than 5,000 years, a nation deeply rooted in the land, yet with its spirit forever turned toward the sea. Genetics reveals the resilience of their lineage, while history demonstrates the vitality of their culture. Together, they form a long and enduring symphony of the Dutch people, steadfast, pioneering, and eternally marked by the passage of time.